Sometimes a character can be a complete loser and still capture the hearts of viewers. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 lovable losers in film. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at characters known for their underachieving ways or simply being deeply uncool, but who audiences can't help but fall in love with nonetheless. Quirks, awkwardness, and all. Oh, we're gonna need more wax! I'm staying. This is gonna be good. <laughs> Number 10. Fogel McLovin, Superbad. You changed your name to... McLovin? <laughs> McLovin? What is it about this character that works on so many levels? As part of a trio of friends trying to get laid before school lets out, Sam Fogel is definitely the biggest loser of the three. He wears vests that make him look like Aladdin, awkwardly tells girls the time, and purchases fake IDs that only have one name, McLovin. Yet, he is easily the most beloved character to emerge from the film. Maybe it's his ability to take a punch, <coughs> or perhaps his affinity for getting drunk with on-duty police officers? Either way, McLovin definitely deserves a spot on this list. How old are you, McLovin? Old enough. Old enough for what? It's a party. Number 9. Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn, Dumb and Dumber <laughs> If you were looking for a film about two lovable chumps who travel across the U.S. while constantly one-upping their own stupidity, look no further. Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels play the aforementioned chumps, and what the characters lack in brains, they more than make up for in heart. Who could forget that scene of Lloyd and Harry turning down the opportunity to be oil boys for a busload of bikini-clad women? There's a town about three miles that way. I'm sure you'll find a couple guys there. Each dumb decision they make is promptly followed by a quote of earnest simplicity, clearly demonstrating to the audience that they are equal parts stupid and sweet. Ultimately, these two goofs make for a highly entertaining duo. Mock! Yeah! Ing! Yeah! Bird! Yeah! 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 Number 8. Morton Schmidt, Doug McQuaid, 21 Jump Street. When did I get stabbed? That's awesome! High school is a tough time for a lot of people. Thankfully, most people only have to go through it once. Morton Schmidt is not most people. As an undercover police officer, Schmidt and his partner Janko are tasked with infiltrating a high school drug ring in the film. You are here simply because you look young. While Janko might not be book smart, it's Schmidt that needs lessons on how to be cool. Socially awkward, bad with the ladies, and physically ungifted, Schmidt has loser written all over him. I look like Fred Savage from The Wonder Years, but completely naked wearing Indian friendship bracelets. However, the character is redeemed through a series of uncomfortable yet sweet sequences throughout the film. Whether he's playing Peter Pan in a play, or awkwardly asking a girl to prom, you gotta love Morton Schmidt, whose further antics continue in the sequel. That was the sex for you. It was fun for me. It's a good time. Number seven, Brian Ralph Johnson, The Breakfast Club. I'm in the math club, uh, the Latin club, and the physics club. physics club. John Hughes's ability to turn chumps into champs right before the eyes of viewers is iconic. The character of Brian Johnson is a perfect example of this. When the film starts, it's clear he's the geek in the group. However, as the five main characters get to know one another, Johnson reveals himself to be a big sweetheart, trying to cope with the struggles of high school like the rest of them. I don't understand what? You think I don't understand pressure, Claire? Hughes definitely had an affinity for writing geeky but lovable characters. Just one year earlier, he gave the world Farmer Ted, the goofball from Sixteen Candles desperately seeking to bed Molly Ringwald Sam, conveniently also played by Anthony Michael Hall. Can I borrow your underpants for 10 minutes? Number 6. Dewey Finn, School of Rock That's right, I'm the man, and who's got the guts to tell me off? Jack Black has made a career out of playing losers. Some lovable, some less so. But as this washed-up musician turned substitute teacher, he's as endearing as they come. The School of Rock Black plays Dewey Finn, a man who rebounds after being kicked out of his own band by transforming a group of prep school kids into the most kick-ass group of child musicians since the Von Trapp family. While his cons include showing up to class hungover and running a little late on the rent, his pros smash those to pieces. Dewey is all heart when it comes to his students and his friends, making us all wish he could have been our teacher. But I have been touched by your kids, and I'm pretty sure I've touched them. Number 5. Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski, The Big Lebowski 
Do you want a drink? Yeah, sure, white Russian. In the pantheon of laid-back movie characters, one stands above the rest. Brilliantly portrayed by Jeff Bridges, Jeff the Dude Lebowski is perpetually one white Russian away from melting into his surroundings. Hey, careful, man! There's a beverage here, huh? After a case of mistaken identity leads to his rug being ruined, the Dude springs into action in the only way he can – slowly, passively, and completely stoned. It might not be just such a simple, uh, you know? What in God's holy name are you blathering about? While his shortcomings are constantly being thrown in the viewer's face, it's his chilled-out demeanor and indifference to pretty much everything that make him one of the most iconic lovable losers to ever grace the screen. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. Number 4. Neville Longbottom, The Harry Potter Franchise uh, uh, I'll fight you! In the Harry Potter universe, one character is the definition of lovable and a quintessential loser. That character is Neville. Whether he's falling off his broom, being picked up by pixies, or cowering in the face of Snape, Neville never quite knows how to handle himself. And yet, when his character is brought up by fans, it's almost always accompanied with glowing praise. This is in no small part due to the incredible bravery that Neville has shown over the years. I award 10 points to Neville Longbottom. <laughs> Whether standing up to his friends, Death Eaters, or Voldemort himself, Neville always follows his heart. And that makes him not only a true Gryffindor, but a pretty lovable guy. Harry's heart did beat for us. For all of us. It's not over. Number 3. Saul Silver, Pineapple Express. Dopest dope I've ever smoked. Hands down, dopest dope I've ever smoked. Movie drug dealers are usually pretty cool guys. They often wear nice clothes, drive sweet cars, and use their menace to strike fear into the hearts of their enemies. If you've seen Pineapple Express, you know that Saul is absolutely nothing like that. Just sit back, get ready to enjoy some of the rarest weed known to mankind. A stoner pot dealer who makes zero effort to impress, Saul is the epitome of loserdom. However, while he may move a little slower than most, his heart is always in the right place. Whether he's visiting his grandma to say hello, or discussing engineering with a customer, Saul is just down to have a good time. If you need more convincing, watch the final diner scene. Priceless. You guys were like both of my best friends, and you didn't even know it, but now you know it. Number 2. Andy Stitzer, the 40-year-old virgin. You, uh, what are you, 25? I'm 40. It's little wonder it took this character so long to pop his cherry. From his collection of unopened action figures, to his ridiculous haircut and poor style choices, Andy Stitzer is definitely a loser. Throughout the film, his work pals try to help him lose his virginity, always with hilarious results. However, while he may be a geeky virgin, Andy is also a big sweetheart. I love women! I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them! He's quick to help those in need and always has time to chat with his neighbors, even if they too think he desperately needs to get laid. That guy needs to get laid. <laughs> you have to tell me something I don't know. <laughs> An iconic portrayal by the always funny Steve Carell, this is one character that took lovable loser to a whole new level. No, Kelly Clarkson! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It's where I keep all my things. I get a lot of compliments on this. Plus, it's not a man purse, it's called a satchel. Okay. Now, what your bear would also like to do with some grass, smoke it. <laughs> nice doggy, cute little pooch. Maybe I got a milk bone. Number one, Philip F. Ducky Dale, pretty in pink. I don't think I'm running myself down. Why? Be because because the way I dress, because because I can laugh at myself. That's called a sense of humor. You should get one. They're nice. In this classic John Hughes written comedy, one character's raw charisma carried the film from start to finish. Portrayed by a very young John Cryer, Ducky leapt off the screen and into the hearts of viewers everywhere. Who could forget the iconic scene of him lip syncing an Otis Redding tune while dancing his heart out? Or the time he got tossed into the girls' washroom and immediately began lamenting the fact that it's nicer than the guys. So this is what it looks like. Next to Blaine, the boy for whom Ducky's love interest pines, Ducky doesn't stand a chance. But he certainly won over the hearts and affections of countless cinema goers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.